Hello everyone, welcome to Just Invest today. And today we're going to be talking about the truth of Warren Buffett and market timing and how he actually times market crashes. Yes, we all think that Warren Buffett never times the market, but that's only half the truth. We got to figure out what does he do and how he made his money, guys. We got to think about it going back when he had he didn't have as much money and what he was doing because that's how we can see how he made 23% plus compounded annually throughout his career. So we know that during this time in 1969, Buffett exited out his partnership. He just closed it down. He knew that he couldn't find anything. There was nothing on the market. He couldn't find anything. He was searching around and he just gave up. He closed his partnership and just gave his money back to everyone who invested in him. He did this for a reason, guys. Like when we look back at it, he saw that there was nothing, so he had to do that. This is not him just timing the market. It's him being very patient. And being very patient is only half the story. You got to know when to fold your hand in the market. You got to know where we are at in the cycle. And when he saw the nifty 50, he didn't even want to dabble into that. He didn't even want to get into that because he knew where the market was heading. So he had a boatload of money on the side. And even though Buffett was four years early, because we know the market crashed around 1973 to 1974, the Dow Jones fell 45%. It was the seventh largest bear market. The London Stock Exchange fell around 75%. So when people think that Buffett doesn't time the market, that's like ha- that's like a half truth because he really does do it, but he does it in a sly value investing way. So he's looking into the market, he's seeing nothing of value. So what he does is actually kind of trim his positions that already got way too high, and then he has it on the side until he finds a good opportunity. He's not per se looking at the economy and seeing that, oh my God, everything's just too wild right now. Things are too expensive. He's looking at the market. He's trying to find businesses. But if he can't find businesses, he has all that money to the side. So it's kind of like he's timing the market, but as a value investor. And that's what he does. Everyone likes to think that the market doesn't, doesn't go through its ups and downs. That is just a stable up where it's trending it's never gonna fall down it's never gonna crash again because we gotta remember like our psychology we have short-term memory we, we forget about the past we don't want to look at it we kind of in 14 years we just kind of forget about it we want to leave it in the past but we always got to look at the past to see what's going to happen in the future and we know like these market trends aren't forever right so Remembering what he did and understanding the market is cyclical in nature and it goes to its ups and downs that's the kind of psychology that Warren Buffett had, and that's what he preaches. And knowing that even though Warren Buffett is a long term investor, he holds for the long term, you have to know when to fold your hand and kind of trim your positions and kind of wait on the sidelines sometimes. And that's what Warren Buffett was really good at because he predicted the 1969, not really predicted, but he had a little kind of like he thought there was going to be a crash right? Because the prices of everything were just too high. And then he also did that during the tech bubble too. He had that sideline because things were just too expensive. He saw pets.com and he saw all these yahoo.com, like all these yahoo, they were selling at like whatever, like 100 PE, 300, like they're just selling at PEs that are crazy, which take would take forever to like um, get in and actually sell the stock and actually make money on it if it was a long-term play into the future. So Buffett understands this and he acts accordingly with what he's doing and what he sees in the market. So during that time, people do not realize if you invest in the S&P 500 from 1969 and then 14 years later, you would have had a 0% return. So just think about that. People just think you can just put your money in the market and just leave it there and just like just expect it just to grow, grow, grow and nothing happened. But if you put your money into the market in 1969 and left it in, in there for 14 years, you would have a 0% return. 
And we can see that with companies even, remember, they, people always use this example of Microsoft. If you invested in Microsoft during that time where it was at the highest before the tech crash, and like 10 to 11 years later, you would have just got a 0%. You were just broken even on your return. <laughs> 11 years later. So when you think about that, you have to understand the market is very cyclical and you got to understand kind of when to fold your hand, when to kind of let, leave some money on the side in case stuff goes haywire and there, there's a potential market crash. Our number one rule as value investors is one, this is what Warren Buffett preaches, don't lose money. And then the second rule, don't lose money again. So when we think about this and what Warren Buffett preaches and says, you do not want to lose money. And that's the key to long-term success in the market. Those huge two, three times where you're losing 15, 20% can hurt your returns in the long run so badly. So we don't want to have those times where we're, we're, we're losing so much money and we can't recover. It takes a long time to recover those gains because that's when we just don't see our money compounding. So during these times, you got to kind of know where we are what do we see in the market? Is there stuff to buy? Is there not stuff to buy? And if there's no stuff to buy, we had that money in the side and we're not just forcing our money into the market. So that's what we got to do as value investors. And that's following the Warren Buffett method. Going back, we can see what Charlie Munger did instead. And what Charlie Munger did, he wished he followed Warren Buffett's suit. Because you got to remember, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger were not in the same area. They weren't in Berkshire yet. Charlie Munger had his own investment practice and Warren Buffett was doing his own thing. So when we look at what Charlie Munger did, we can see that from 1962 to 1969, his partnership averaged a 31% annual return. So Charlie Munger was going crazy in the market, killing it, everything. And then I think the next two years, he averaged like 13%. But then in 1973, in 1974, during that crash, boom, everything dropped. And then it went 31%, negative 31% and negative 32%. And Charlie Munger and his partnership, they just have a rough time. People kind of exited their, um, uh, their position. People didn't want to stay in with the Mungers because 31%, that's a huge hit during that time. And the Dow didn't fall that far down. So people were so worried about their money. They were kind of telling Charlie, oh, we want our money back and stuff like that. And then kind of Charlie felt bad, right? So looking at that time period and seeing how Charlie had only like around three stocks. He had like blue chip stamps. And then he had a new another uh, two companies. And Charlie wished he did what Warren Buffett did and because he, he saw what was coming, but he didn't pull the trigger. He didn't do the exact same thing uh, Warren Buffett did. So just from learning from these examples, you can see the two different approaches. But guys, it's still up to you to see what you want because people always give me the example of, oh, the market can still go, in, go on for another 5, 10 years unbothered untouched with no crashes and it can still continue to go up like that and if you don't have all your money in the market you can be losing out on huge gains but i see that as like a good theory like you can you can kind of reverse that and say yeah that's true and it's all up to you at the end of the day to see what you're doing and see how you want to play this market but when i look at warren buffett when i look at charlie munger and seeing that two different approaches, it kind of makes me want to go more the Warren Buffett style. Because remember, right now too, Warren Buffett has like $160 billion on the sidelines. During the crash in March, during the whole uh, pandemic, he barely invested in anything. He, he, you know what he did? He bought back more shares of his Berkshire company. <laughs> so he saw his Berkshire undervalued. He bought more shares. So that even shows you Till this day, he still feels like the market is way overvalued. He can't find deals. He's having all this money on the side. So what do you think is going to happen when that market crashes? Warren Buffett is going to go wild. And that's exactly what he said during 1973 and 1974. It was the best time of his life. 
he couldn't stop finding companies to buy. He just said he didn't have any more money to put into companies to buy because he was just like, it's like a haram. Like, there's so many, it was like a bunch of haram. There was a bunch of girls coming in and he didn't know which one to pick. He couldn't pick, he didn't know which one to pick because there were so many of them. <laughs> so I think that's what Warren Buffett sees right now. He sees the market at extraordinary levels. He has all this money on the side and he's still waiting, being patient because he knows when that time comes, He's not going to, he's going to bring a bucket instead of a thimble to get all that, all those businesses, all that ring gold that's going to be coming down when it for sure happens. Because the market is going to crash no matter if it's five years from now, 10 years from now, if it's this year, next year, it's going to happen. The market is cyclical. It can't just sustain itself going 10 years straight up. It's impossible. And we'll see what happens, guys. If you like this video please like it, subscribe to my channel, and I'll get back to you in the next video. Peace.